Well, hello to you. It's Wednesday, and on Wednesdays, we're doing a short Bible study together, so I want to get right into it. And I want you and I to think about today on this matter of the way to joy. And I want to talk about joy in life. You and I are living in a day where people are not happy. We're living in a day where things are not going the way they should go. In fact, this past week, the Supreme Court decisions, absolutely reprehensible that our Supreme Court would do what they did this past week. You and I are living in what can easily be described as the last days. We are seeing things that no generation has ever seen, and they're coming all at once together. Um, reading about some of that even this morning. You and I are living in some interesting days. We have violence in the streets. We have groups of people taking over city blocks and our leaders not only not dealing with it, but even endorsing what they're doing. You and I are living in some very violent and lawless days. There is a great disrespect for authority in America today. And yet in the midst of all of this, you and I are seeking the joy that only Jesus can give to us. And so I want to talk about the way to joy, because there are a lot of people today who are looking for joy. In fact, I decided to Google, how can I have joy? And I wanted to just see uh, what would come of it. And so in 0 0.70 seconds, I had 1 billion, 110 million results. And as I looked into some of the articles, uh, most of them actually were just positive thinking, just try to think good thoughts. For example, here's uh, one that had a list of 11 simple ways to find joy. And I'll just read a couple of them. Number one, stop waiting to be happy. Number two, add happiness to your life right now. Uh, here's an, uh, uh, number four, get in a joyful state of mind. Number five, stop worrying. Uh, number eight, laugh more. So these 11 ways are really just a, a lot of positive thinking sort of thing. Well, the Bible says that you and I can have joy, and we want God's joy in our life. And so Paul, when he writes to the Thessalonians, as we've noted in chapter 1, he commends the Thessalonian church for their steadfastness, for the way they were serving the Lord, for their faithfulness, such that others were noticing that. In chapter 2, he begins by talking about their own mistreatment in Philippi and how they had been abused, how they had been persecuted amid verse uh, 2, amid much opposition. And so Paul knew what it was to suffer, but he had a joy that the world could not take away because the world didn't give it to him. And so I want to say straight up this matter of joy in our life. And I want you and me and anyone who hears this to have the joy that only Jesus can give in life, even amid the situations in which we find ourselves. Oh, by the way, one more thing. As uh, I was getting ready to do that this morning, two articles came across of groups that I really love to follow. And so here's one of them, four proofs that things will only get worse and not better in the last days. By the way, the Bible does say that. The Bible says it will get worse and worse. But even in the midst of the worse and worse, you and I can have the joy of Jesus. Here's another one. 2020 has been a miserable year and Americans are the unhappiest they have been in ages. And there's a picture of a young lady, uh, very um, distraught looking there. And uh, the truth of the matter is we're seeing a lot of problems in our world because people are feeling hopeless. So I want to say to you, my dear friend today, our hope is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. If I put my hope in anything or anyone else, it, it could be taken away. My hope must be in Jesus Christ and my relationship with him, period, period. And so Paul, writing to the Thessalonians, having talked about how they were abused and how they'd gone through this persecution, I want to look at verse 7, chapter 2 of 1 Thessalonians. But we prove to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. Paul says, this is the way we treated you, as a nursing mother cares for her children. Isn't that great? Uh, is there a better picture in all the world than that kind of a picture, a mother caring for her children, by the way? Uh, that is the normal way, what we're seeing in our world today. That's just one more example of the wickedness of our world, that we have just the opposite with the abortion industry and all of that. 
We have a, a, all kinds of things going on, in our, but there's not a greater illustration than a mother caring for her children. So I want to say this. There's not a higher call in a woman's life than to care for her sweet children. She may have 20 degrees from 20 different universities, but the greatest call of her life is to take care of her precious children. And there's nothing greater than a mom taking care of a mother. Taking, and Paul says, we were like that. We treated you like a nursing mother caring for her children. By the way, the ideal is to have a loving father, a loving mother raising those children. Uh, mom and dad loving the Lord. I know that there are a lot of cases where that's not the, the uh, situation. And in those cases, that mother or that father who's raising the children has uh, even more added to them. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. In fact, let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for our single parents today. I pray for those for whom life has taken such unexpected turns and they never really anticipated where they are right now. But in the midst of where they are, you are especially near to the brokenhearted, to those who are crushed in spirit. And I pray for our single parents today. I pray for all of our parents today, our families, but especially our single parents, Lord, as they have so much on their plate, so much to do. May the strength of the Lord God Almighty sustain them and guide them in these days. Lord, we're so grateful for them. Bless them today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's talk about joy. Paul says, having so fond an affection for you, we were well pleased. Notice the words. This is not something that we didn't really want to do. This is not something we were forced to do. We were well pleased, well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, and it is his gospel. We've talked about that. Not only the gospel of God, but even our very own lives. Paul says to this church, we were well pleased to present not only the gospel, but to pour our lives in you. And that really is what church is, isn't it? I know I'm biased, but I think Cornerstone Church is one of the greatest churches around. And by the way, not because of me, but because of our precious people, all of our people who are some of the greatest people in the earth, Cornerstone Church in Maiden. All right, enough for an advertisement. Let's talk about the way to joy because we need God's joy in these days in which we live. How can we have God's joy? Well, I want to say two things. I mentioned John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus said that. But I want to say secondly, 1 John 3, 8 says this, for the Son of God appeared for this very purpose that he might destroy the works of the devil. So not only did Jesus come that we might have life abundantly, but he came to destroy the work of the devil, not only in our world, but most especially in our hearts and lives. And the two are interconnected, aren't they? When he destroys the devil's work in our lives, the society will follow suit. In fact, the reason we're seeing so much stuff in our world today is because of Satan's work in hearts and lives. And so he is, in fact, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, he came to destroy the works of the devil. The word devil there is diabolos. You've probably heard that. And the word literally means accuser or slanderer. And doesn't he do that? Doesn't Satan always try to slander and accuse us and say we're not good enough and we don't match up and we're not worthy and all that kind of thing? Jesus came to destroy that and show us that we are very much worth it. So how can we have joy in our lives? We're going to have to go quickly. You ready? Here's one. Realize, realize that true joy can only come through and from a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Realize that. This world may offer temporary happiness, and there are things that make us happy, but it cannot offer us joy. And know this, that joy is one of the evidences of the fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. In Galatians 5.22, we are given a list of the evidences of the fruit of the Spirit of God. It says this for, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nine evidences. Love, joy, Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. Love is a fruit of the Spirit of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So joy cannot come apart from the Holy Spirit who comes into our hearts and lives at the moment of salvation. And so realize that. Now, how, how else can I have joy? 
here's a word, care, take care of yourself. Take care, if, you, if we would have joy, deep-seated joy, not only does it come from the Lord Jesus Christ and a relationship with him, but take care of yourself. One of the, one of the things that will steal joy is not taking care of yourself. What do you mean? Get enough sleep. Get enough sleep. Prepare when there's something that needs to be prepared for. But then just through the day, take some time. Instead of staying so busy on all the stuff that we can easily do that with, just take some time to thank the Lord for his many blessings. Just take some time to say, oh God, I'm glad that you are very aware of every detail of my life. And so take care of yourself. Here's another. Be thankful. Be thankful. If we would know God's joy, we have to be thankful. The Bible says to you and me, in everything, in everything, not for everything, in everything, give thanks. Be grateful for what we do have, not always looking at what we don't have. Isn't that easy to do? Isn't it easy in our world today? We see them with that and them with that and wish we had that and this, and we're not even thankful for what we do have. In fact, you and I are living in a very ungrateful society. We're living in a world today that is very thankless and yet we are called, everything we have comes from the Lord. In fact, let me add this. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says that all things have been created through Christ, listen, and for Christ. Everything in the earth has been created for the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, he owns it all, doesn't he? And so be thankful. Here's another. If we would have joy, don't compare. Be cautious of comparisons. Here's what I mean. Not always looking, not only comparing what they might have, but the kind of person they might be. Um, maybe they've been blessed with something or this or that, and, and we start to wish we were that and this, and we idolize that one. No, no, no. Be cautious of comparisons. Here's another. Depend on Jesus for everything, for everything. Uh, a little while ago, I went home to let our little puppy out, and as I was already thinking about this whole matter, I took her outside, then I scooped her up and just hugged on her and took her back into the house. You know what that's like if you have a pet. But I was reminded that she is totally dependent upon Julie and me, totally. And she sat there in my arm, basically, I guess you could say this, just loving me and me loving her. I, don't, I guess dogs love. I think they do. And it reminded me that's how we are with the Lord. We are, to a large degree, so helpless with the things that are going on. And yet he scoops us up in his arms, and we are totally dependent upon him. And that's where our joy comes from. Isn't that great? Amen. All right, here's another. Fill your mind with truth. Fill your mind with truth. A couple of things about that. Obviously, the truth is the word of God. If you go days and days and days and never open the word of God, no wonder we start to lose our joy because we start to get the world's views constantly. And so spend some time in God's word. By the way, Old and New Testament. In the Old Testament, just to read some of the great biographies of God's people and how he brought them through the trials. In the New Testament as well. And as we read God's word, then we are reminded we're not in this by ourselves. That God's people through the ages have had difficulty, but they had the joy of Christ in their hearts. And so not only reading the scriptures, but might I add this, I did this recently, cut off the news. The news is 24-7 stuff. Cut off the news. Get away from it for a little while. And in its place, cut off some good Christian music. You and I happen to live here near 106.9, the light, Christian radio station, with excellent music, excellent teaching, and find you a radio in the house. That's what I do. Find a radio in the house and just cut it on 106.9 and leave it playing. Now, obviously, when you come in, you'll have great music playing. You'll have great teaching playing. And when you're going about your business, just playing some good Christian music, something that's uplifting. And so fill your mind with truth. Here's another. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Make short work of sin. And let me even go further than that because this will steal our joy. Eradicate the hidden things in life. Anything in our lives that nobody else even knows about, um, but it's just those little things in our own life that we know shouldn't be there. 
they may not be terribly wrong, but we know they shouldn't be there. Just some little hidden stuff. It's like little dirt in the carpet of our life. And we want to make sure that's, let the, let the Lord do a serious vacuum cleaning in the carpet of our life. All right? All right, here's another. Reach out to others. Reach out to others. Uh, speak to a trusted friend. Speak to a pastor if you want to speak to him. Uh, in some cases, if you're going through an especially difficult time, you might even talk to a doctor about what's going on in your life. But reach out to others. And when we begin talking with others, which is part of our problem, actually, because we've been, quote, socially isolated, part of our problem is we have lost the interconnectedness with other people to be a part of their lives and see what's going on in their lives. We will quickly realize we're not the only ones going through some difficulty. In fact, at this very point in time, the whole world's going through these difficulties. You're not alone. All right, here's another. Pray, pray, pray about everything all the time. Whatever it is, pray about it, pray about it. Just let prayer be the foundation of our, let it be to us like breath to our body, praying, praying. And if not spoken, certainly thinking it. Oh God, help me through this day. Help me through this situation. Do in my life as only you can do. He will do it. Praying, praying. And hey, pray for others too. Pray for others. There's something about praying for others that helps us. Pray for others. God answers prayer. Yes, he does. Hey, let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for the one listening to this right this moment. Whatever's going on in their life, you are so aware of it. And I pray, Lord, may the joy of the Lord be their strength and remind them that you are so in control. And may each one of us, myself especially, yield our lives to you every moment of every day. Do in us as only you can do by your great power and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So pray. All right, here's another. And I'll use the... Let me say it this way, evaluate correctly. I could also use the word judge correctly. This idea that we're not to ever judge is just crazy. Every one of us judges and we have to judge. We couldn't live if we didn't make judgments. But judge correctly. Consider that Jesus is worthy of everything and our lives are only important insofar as we are serving him. But realize that there are some things that are right, some things that are wrong. Judge correctly. Hey, remember this. Jesus himself experienced hatred and violence when he was here on this earth. So we're not talking to someone who doesn't know what we're going through. Things were not right when he was here on this earth. All right, but realize that this, that God is faithful and present, and he is especially faithful and present in the difficult times of life. Now listen very carefully. Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. I put it on my Facebook just a while ago. Psalm 34, 18 says this, God is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now, why would the psalmist say that? God's near to us all the time. But the psalmist says, 34, 18 of Psalms, he is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Are you brokenhearted today? God is nearer than ever in your life. Don't ever forget that. All right, here's another. If we are to experience his joy, be a giving person. That's what Paul says here. We were well pleased to give not only the gospel, but our very lives, giving to others, not necessarily money, but of our time and our attention, uh, giving ourselves, uh, serving other people, uh, being especially alert for those who are going through exceptionally difficult times and being a friend to them during these times. They'll never forget it. Realize that the whole world is going through a lot of difficulty. Your friends are going through some tough times. Just be a listening ear. Just let them know you care. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that a wonderful thing? All right, here's another. Surrender daily to the Lord. Surrender daily to the Lord. Let our morning prayer be, oh God, today I surrender my heart anew to you. Let our prayer in the evening be, Lord, as I sleep, I surrender my heart to you. All right, here's another. If you would have joy, realize that God knows every detail of your life and cares about it. Here's another. Yield. Yield. Now, when we see a yield sign, that means slow up and see what's going on. Well, I'm talking about yielding, giving everything we are to the Lord. Listen, Colossians 1.16, everything has been created for him and by him, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have anything you enjoy in life, realize it belongs to the Lord. 
Everything about us belongs to the Lord. Then understand, understand this, that the only thing that really matters is our relationship to Jesus Christ. Everything else in life finds its importance only insofar as it relates to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally and lastly, be ready. Be ready. You and I are living in some days such as we've never seen. And there, there. I was reading this morning that North and South Korea are about to get into a war again. And that war, the Korean War, never ended, actually. Uh, they had an armistice, but they never had a peace treaty. And now they're about to get into war again. And we're seeing Israel's gearing up because she's being uh, threatened by other nations. We are living in days that shout to us that the Lord Jesus is coming soon. So I say to this to you and me, live with the joy of the Lord, but be ready for a moment for the Lord to come back for us. By the way, he's coming back for us. He is the bridegroom and we're the bride. Think about a wedding day and the bride is just so excited. The groom is so excited. We're looking forward to that day as the Lord's coming back for us. It could be today. So we're back to square one. Be sure that you know the Lord Jesus as your savior. Paul says, we have such a love for you that we were well pleased to impart not only the gospel of God, but our own lives for you. Isn't that great? Amen. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we want your joy, your joy in our lives every moment of every day. And it starts with a relationship with you through repentance and salvation. And I pray for my precious brother or sister who's listening to this. I pray that your joy may be made full in them this very moment as we together yield all that we are to you. We thank you.